Well, hello everyone, it's April 22nd, and I'm sitting here thinking to myself, where has this month gone? I remember April, April Fool's, April 1st was practically yesterday. Every day seems to be running into each other, but you know what, today's Wednesday, and Wednesday's when I give you a complete trade with my analysis, with the setup, with the option. It's called Red Meat Wednesday. It's when I bust out the red meat and put it on the table for you. So let's talk about what I'm looking at and why I'm looking at it. What you're looking at right now is the 10 major sectors. If you're looking at the 10 major sectors of the S&P, they are divided, healthcare is leading, technology is behind, so forth and so forth. As you could see here, energy, financial, industrial, they're not looking so well. So because financial is lagging behind and energy is just overdone, we're gonna look at the financial sector. So now that we know what sector we're gonna focus on, let's go to the S&P 500. We're looking at the strongest stocks, but the financial sector, it's not doing so well, right? It's lagging behind. So we wanna look at the weakest stocks. So when we look at the weakest stocks, and if we keep looking and looking here, we will see Wells Fargo right here, which is probably on our list of the weakest stocks, you'll see that Wells Fargo is probably one of the weakest. Remember, this is the strongest 500, this is the weakest, and this is looking from the bottom. So this is picking the bottom 500 stocks. And as you could see here, Wells Fargo is all the way on the bottom. As a matter of fact, if you look further down, I'm not seeing too many banks or large financials. That's telling me that Wells Fargo is the weakest bank in the financial sector. So we looked, we started off looking at the 10 major sectors. We realized that financials were in the crap, or excuse my French, uh, only, only lagging, be, only energy is lagging behind. So it's weak because energies, I mean, did you see May contract? It was negative yesterday and the day before, crazy. So we're gonna stick with the financials because I think they have a little more down to go, whereas energy may actually bump up a little bit. So again, once we identified the sector, we looked at our CSI index, we looked at the strongest, and then we look at the weakest. And since we're looking at financials, non-financial, 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 non these are non-financials, but Comerica and Wells Fargo are. I'm not a big fan of Comerica, and they don't seem to be too far apart, so I'll just stick to Wells Fargo because Wells Fargo has got crazy liquidity. So we pull up Wells Fargo, and again, I want you to see my entire process, my entire process of how I go through this. Now, notice I'm looking at a three-month chart of Wells Fargo, and what I want to see first is I want to see how much upside, how much of a dead cat bounce it got post the uh, capitulation or the uh, trout that we see right here. So the trout happened at $24. The high was at 47. The stock dropped like half of its value in, in a month. And then the rest of the stock market went higher, but the financials didn't. We went as high as 33, and now we're near the bottom once again. And I believe we're gonna see more downside on the financials. So we're looking at a pullback, we're looking at a short, we're looking at a stock that's in the second to the weakest sector, and this is the second to the weakest stock. So we've got the second to the weakest sector, the financial, because energy is the weakest, and we got second to the weakest stock. And if we wanted to look at Comerica, I would venture to say that it would probably look exactly the same. Yeah, and it does. So it, it wouldn't make any difference whether we chose Comerica or Wells Fargo. But in this case, since Wells Fargo has better liquidity for options, I'm making that assumption and I'm probably right. I'm not saying the other one doesn't, it's an S&P stock, but Wells Fargo is a really big stock. So we want to go a few months, a few months forward and we'll probably give this trade a few weeks. And we want to sell we want to buy a put option if Wells Fargo trades below 26, how about 26.25? And then we'll cover, we'll cover the put, we'll buy the put back. No, we're gonna, we're gonna, excuse me, we're not selling short. If you're gonna sell short the stock, then you're gonna sell short at about 26.25 and you're gonna cover your short at about 35. So 26.25, we go short and we buy back at 34. Now, if you're trading options, what you would do, you would go to the puts, 
you would go to a strike price that's, let's see here, no, that's 24 days, not enough. I wanna go, how about 87 days? That way we could liquidate it if it doesn't go our way. We looked at the puts, it's trading at 2684 right now. We look at the puts, look at this. That's liquidity and open interest. How about we go to the 25 put, we buy it at $2.60 if, if the stocks goes to $26.25, it's a $26.84. So if it goes to $26.25, we will buy the 25 put right around, it'll probably be about 280 at that point. And the expiration, it's a monthly option. There is no monthly options anymore. They're all weekly since they expire every Friday. But we're gonna be buying the 717 expiration, which got 87 days. I'm not planning on holding this for more than 30 days or 20 days which means we would still liquidate the option when it's got plenty of time premium left. So again, we're looking at Wells Fargo. We're looking at the 25 strike price put. We're probably gonna be spending about 280. And if the stock, let me just give you a chart. Again, we initiate the put if the stock goes right here to 26.25 and we liquidate the put if the stock goes to 34 or above 34. It's not an expensive put, so we're gonna give it a little time, but I think Wells Fargo can go down for another level, probably into the $18, $19 level. So again, it's Wells Fargo. The reason we picked it is because we looked at the sectors. It, the financials were the second to the weakest sector, and then we looked at the stocks out of the S&P 500, the CSI scan. Wells Fargo was the second to the weakest stock. So we've got second to the weakest sector and we got second to the weakest stock. You could have gone with, with Comerica. Honestly, they, I mean, their correlation is super tight. Then we looked at the options. We looked at the 717 expiration, 87 days left. So even if we hold the 20, 25 days, we're not gonna get much DK. We're probably gonna lose about half of its value. Let me, let me, let's see, let's go, let's just see what a month back option costs. See, 210, not even a, not even that much. I mean, this is an option that's 30 days less and the, and the option costs $2.10. So you're talking about 70, 60, 70 cents of premium. Let's even go one further. Here, puts 25, yeah, 170. You're not talking about a lot of premium. So if, if the stock was to stay where it was right now, let's say the price didn't move, you would probably be able to buy this option for about $2.80 and liquidate it in about 30 days for about $2. So your risk would be about 80 cents, 90 cents, give or take, not a lot. But if the stock moves down to it breaks below the current level from 26 to about 20, you could tr triple or quadruple the price of the option. So again, we're looking at 717 expiration. We're looking at the put, we're looking at 25 strike price, which will probably be a little more expensive than the price you see here. Option and liquidity is gonna be really good. You're not gonna to have to really work this order a lot. Mid, mid is 253 right now. And if Wells Fargo goes to 26.25, we're buying the put. If Wells Fargo goes to 34, we're liquidating the put. We're giving it a lot of volatility, a lot of room, and about 25 days to see if it takes. And folks, I've got something big for you. For the first time ever, there's a timing system. This timing system is able to pinpoint the perfect entry before a stock explodes, not after. Everyone's an Einstein after the fact. Perfect for situations like we're in right now where steady income is hard to come by. This means you get in, you get out, and you get paid without having to tie up your money for months at a time. And you're not day trading. You're, all, you're always holding stocks for a few days. So you don't have to worry about that darn day trading rule, none of that. And in today's market, this is an opportunity you honestly don't wanna miss. Click the link below or at the bottom of this video, get all the details. Again, this is an opportunity. This is not something Wall Street wants you to know. You're gonna learn a timing system that pinpoints when a stock is gonna make a move before it explodes. Everyone's an Einstein after the fact. After Amazon runs up 100 points, everybody, everyone's an Einstein. Learn how to identify stocks that are about to explode before they explode. That's the key. That's the million dollar question before they explode. I, I backed into this years ago by accident and it's one of my most successful and best programs ever. You are going to love this and you cannot afford to miss this in this market. Sign up now, check this out now. Do not miss out. 
find stocks that are ready to explode before they explode. Before, not after, before. Talk to you guys soon.